Okay guys, welcome back. Glad to have you. Thanks for being here and uh, sticking around for the second part of my paint cast this evening. Uh, we're going to be working on Bradigus tonight, uh, as you can see him sitting here in all of his primed glory. Um, this model is for Becky, uh, Becky Ronan, as I um, mentioned on my last paint cast where I started work on this big guy. Um, Becky had painted up, or not, not painted, uh, knitted up some uh, shark slippers for all my kids for Christmas. And man, was that a hit with them. They freaking loved it. And uh, payment for that, I told her I would paint a model for her, uh, which she got pretty excited about. And this is the model here that I'm working on, Bradius. So uh, last time um, I was uh, working on this model on, the, on my show, um, I had done all the assembly and gotten everything ready to go for paint. Um, in between then and now, I have primed him, as you can see, uh, primed him in black. Um, and we are going to be base coating him tonight with the airbrush. And the colors I'm going to work with here, Becky, are Vallejo game colors. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be working with uh, Hexed Lichen and Warlord Purple. Okay, and. I'm going to deviate a little bit from some of the purple recipes that I've been using on the show lately. It seems like I've been painting a lot of purple, <laughs> and so I'm going to kind of get away from that a little bit tonight, and uh, hopefully give you a little bit of a brighter purple, maybe in, a, in some ways, something with a little bit more color, a little more pop to it, um, something just a little more fun all around. Also, um, people who've watched my previous paint casts have seen that I've used a lot of zenithal stuff. Um, Bradigus here, in my opinion, is not a very good model for doing zenithal work with. That's just my opinion. A lot of people are going to have their own with it, and that's fine. Um, so I'm not going to be doing any white coat on top of this. I'm going to use the black to my advantage for some shade for some shading, and um, I'm just going to show you guys more or less how I use an airbrush. To, um, to block in my shadows uh, and my base colors, so um, in a non-zenithal fashion. So you're going to want to uh, uh, apply these, uh, these colors, Becky, uh, you know, via airbrush as much as you can. I know you said your husband has one, so that'll be good for him to use this. Uh, the other thing, too, about the Vallejo colors, um, they've got some great colors, they've got some great combinations, um, but personally, I find that the um, Vallejo tends to be a little fragile when it's airbrushed. So, what I do to mitigate that is I will add a drop or two of Future Floor Polish, just straight Future Floor Polish, no, no thinning it down, um, to the paint. Just one or two drops, you don't need much, and that just gives a little bit more of an acrylic, well, it puts a little more acrylic uh, coating into the paint mixture, which um, is going to create just a little bit more durability. So, um, and it shouldn't affect the sheen of it too much. And if it does, you know, we can always hit it with a with a um, a dull coat when we when we finish up uh, um, at the end. So, I am just getting my airbrush ready here. The thinner that I'm using uh, is the thinner I, thinner I typically use when I'm airbrushing. And that's the uh, Vallejo airbrush thinner. And the uh, Vallejo paints do do come a bit thicker, I think, than than some of the other paints that are out there. So you want to thin it a little bit more than than you normally would. So like the P3 stuff, I thin you know one to three, one to four. The Vallejo stuff, I'll probably thin one to six, one to seven, right around there. Um, and then I add, like I said, a, a drop or two of straight future floor polish. Okay, and that uh, is just going to give the paint a little more durability. And again, that's my opinion, and uh, it's been my experience. Your mileage may vary. And 
you know what I'm going to do here real quick, guys? Um, I need to change the title of this paint cast. So that way, people know what they're what they're watching. Bradigus part two. I feel like saying Spartacus when I say Bradigus. He's the first person that pops in my head. I don't know if that's what it is with you guys. All right. So got my colors mixed. Got my hood turned on, and. Um, I'm just going to start painting now, so uh, follow along guys. Completely off screen there. Sorry about that, guys. So there's your base coat of the color. Alright. And I'm going to take the Warlord Purple now. Right there. And we're going to throw a little bit of that in my airbrush now. And start doing a little bit of highlighting. And here in a second, I'm going to grab another purple color or mix another purple color up and uh, we'll do some shading as well. And we'll just go back and forth until we uh, get to the uh, color that I like. <coughs> I sure I stay on camera here for you guys.
Sorry about that. Didn't have time to figure that out between the break there. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for a second because one thing my airbrush is doing right now is the tip. I'm getting a little bit of tip dry. Okay. And you can see it. Let's see if it auto-focuses on there. I don't think it's going to. Let me go auto-focus on this. You can kind of see the paint building up right there. One thing you can do just be very careful when you do it is just simply wipe it off with your fingertip. You can bend the needle when you do that, so just be a little careful. The other thing you can do, take a paper towel, put a little bit of Windex on it, and just gently clean that off. The last thing you can do too is with a paintbrush that has been dipped in cleaner just simply wipe that off. One thing I've found is tip dry tends to happen a lot if you don't clear your nozzle and if you're running uh, too high of a PSI. So a couple things to, to keep in mind. Alright, there is Braddock's back and we're going to keep working the purple here. Turning it a little bit towards pink, but uh, I still kind of like it, so we'll keep working it. So that's looking pretty good there. I want to clear my, my hairbrush now. And we're going to do some shading now. And this is where it can get really tricky because you don't want to undo all the highlighting that you just did. So this is also where brush control really pays off. Uh, knowing how to operate your trigger, knowing how to operate your brush, all very, very, very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a nice, deep, dark purple and we're going to do that with exile blue and sanguine base probably do about two to one ratio of exile blue to sanguine that should create a nice dark contrast for us He does look a bit cotton candy-ish, that's what someone uh, just said on the uh, chat room. He looks like a cotton candy druid. 
I suppose so. But once I start adding some shadow in here, and then I go back with the brush, he's going to look badass. That's what he's going to look like. <laughs> as badass as purple can look. Okay, so um, you can kind of see where I've let, let some of the shadows stay. So that's where I'm going to kind of focus my airbrushing initially. I'm also going to focus this color right around these nibs right here because that's where the rocks are going to attach. So I want to create a little bit of shadow that's going to be sitting behind them. shadow color. So about a two to one mix of Exile Blue and Sanguine Base. Or excuse me, on my palette. I'm going to be doing a little bit of two brush blending here. Yeah, Mace, uh, someone just commented in, in the chat, Mace Windu made purple look badass. Uh, I think the real way that that need, needs to be uh, said and I'm not usually one to drop the F-bomb, and this is a family-friendly show, so I typically don't. So if you've got kids in the room, please remove them. But uh, really what it is is 
Uh, Mace Windu, aka Samuel Jackson, made that motherfucking purple look badass. That's what. That's the way that breaks down. So, there you go. All right. So, what I want to do now is uh, I want to focus on some of these tighter folds here and uh, getting that shadow color into there to create some of that uh, that contrast um, and uh, get some of those spots that I had missed uh, with the airbrush that were just too small to get into. And I'm going to do that with uh, two brush blending. Pulling out a little further so it's not such a chore to get my position right here. So someone on uh, Facebook, I mean on the chat, is uh, calling me out on my inconsistencies with my what I say and what I do. Uh, previous uh, paint casts, I have said, don't do brush work on models until they've uh, airbrush uh, until the airbrushing is dried for at least 24 hours. Um, that's the safe way to do it. Um, I am trying to. Uh, power through this though. Um, no, no disrespect to, to Becky or, or to anyone else uh, whose who's paint casts I'm working on, but um, I've, got, uh, I've got a bit of a queue, a bit of a line that's built up uh, due to lock and load that I need to get through. And uh, so I'm just trying to get through stuff uh, fairly quickly. Um, that's one reason why I added the drop 
of uh, future floor polish to the uh, to the paint so that uh, it did have a little bit more of a durable surface um, and you know I hate to say it uh, buddy but uh, this is a one of those cases of do as I say not as I do <laughs> and I'll just be honest and own that uh, but you know all things uh, all things equal and you know given a given time you know to work through things uh, I would wait uh, just to be safe but I also did a fair amount of the brush of the shading already with um, with the airbrush so I really don't have to do too much here what what it is you really need to avoid is um, overworking the surface because if that paint's not fully dry you can actually reactivate it to a degree and and pull the paint off right off the surface uh, I've, I've done that many times um, so you know the trick is not to work one area too long if you're going to do that you know uh, work an area move along maybe come back to it later um, if you stay in an area for too long, uh, brushing back and forth, that's when you run that risk of uh, of pulling that paint up. So, and you know, since what I'm doing here is teaching people how to paint, you know, that's one of the things I want to make sure people understand is is how to is how to avoid some of those pitfalls um, as you get more experienced and you become more comfortable not only with your own paint style but you know how the paints interact with that paint style um, you kind of learn where your your limitations are and uh, you know how far you can go before something happens so there you go All right, so there's the uh, there's the back of the cloak there, and it looks like my lamp is there. You go. So there's the, there's the back of your cloak. You see how that looks? You see how that shading, that highlighting turned out? Looks pretty good. Got some nice uh, nice color there. Got some nice pop. Got some nice shadow. Answer a couple more questions. So Krugen uh, N, Krugen LN is asking, I'm new to two brush, new to painting and two brush blending. What is two brush blending? Let me just explain it to you really quick, buddy. The idea behind two brush blending is um, you have two brushes, okay, and you have a color, and um, come back up here where you can see you have two brushes and you have a color okay and the idea is one brush is used to apply the color the second brush is used to blend the color okay so um, often that second blending brush has some kind of blending medium in it uh, some people will use water some people will use saliva I'm a brush licker so I use a little bit of saliva I'll drag the tongue the, the brush across my tongue to uh, to moisten it so that I can blend the edge that it's in. Okay. Um, very simply put, um, let me just demonstrate real quick on a on a card here. Okay. Very simply put, you'll apply your color, and then with your blending brush, you'll start moving back and forth on the surface, pushing into the color and then slowly pulling out. And as you're pulling that out and pulling away, um, the color is going to blend with, with what's beneath it there. I mean, this is a little bit of a harsh blend because I'm doing it fast, number one, and number two, it's on paper, so it uh, absorbs at a different rate. But looking at a model, okay, um, let's, take, uh, let's take this part of his cloak right here, okay?
apply it, pushing back and forth into the color, moving it where you want it to go, and then slowly uh, pulling out and feathering that edge as you go. That, in a nutshell, is two brush blending. And of course it looks a lot smoother here because um, the surface beneath has been um, airbrushed already. Uh, what I'm doing here with these colors is just uh, darkening it um, a little bit more, pushing that contrast down just a little bit further. Um, one thing I, I'll, I'll say to you, um, if you're interested in, in wanting to become a better painter, uh, I post these videos that I stream onto YouTube when I'm done so that everybody can partake of them. But for the specific clients that I am um, doing these for, um, I, I uh, do. I offer them uh, additional time uh, beyond YouTube um, for instruction and tutorial to help them learn how to paint the color scheme that they're wanting to paint. So if you're interested in becoming a better painter and you want to invest in that a little bit and, and um, get some one-on-one -on -one time, I do do that over the internet. And you can contact me through my Facebook page, Red Modeling, uh, facebook.com forward slash Red Modeling Painting. Uh, you can also reach me on email at redmodeling at gmail.com. It's one thing to watch someone demonstrate a technique on a miniature and then go and recreate it, try and recreate it on a different miniature on your own. And then it's another entirely another thing to watch someone or demonstrate a paint um, on a miniature that you intend to paint. It becomes a little more personal. And that's really what, what these paint cast videos are all about for me, is, is really teaching people how to paint. Uh, I've got a passion for teaching. I love teaching. Um, I love painting. And, you know, this is just a great, great way to do it both. And once you get the hang of two brush blending, um, it goes really fast. Um, some of the stuff that I've done in my other paint casts haven't had quite as much airbrush work done to them prior to me doing the two brush blending and um, you can move through stuff pretty darn quick. Okay. All right, that's looking it's looking pretty good. You can get in here a little bit. I'll tell you guys something that was really cool from Lock and Load. Uh, I sat down at the table that uh, Matt DiPietro was uh, sitting at when he was painting the Ice King, and, or the, new, the Glacier King, the new uh, you know, P3 uh, Troll Colossal that's coming out here pretty soon. And uh, I just sat and watched him paint for, I don't know, 40 minutes, an hour maybe. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm, I'm really intimidated by painters, uh, other painters, uh, especially uh, ones, uh, well, I mean, I any painter, you know, I, I, I really, um, I really feel uh, like um, I've got a lot to learn still, and so when I meet people who, who paint, I, I, I feel a little intimidated because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it is I can, I can learn, what it is I can change in my own paint style and in my own, uh, um, uh, techniques and and and, and, and themes to, to 
to improve how I how I'm painting. So uh, so anyway, it was um, I, I guess honestly in some ways I sat down at that table expecting to see this um, amazing new way of doing things and this you know <clears throat> incredibly uh, zen-like experience of you know uh, monks chanting in the background or or uh, you know uh, some kind of a Dalai Lama type figure you know sitting atop of a mountain answering the you know the mysteries of life you know I'm sitting there at, at this table with Matt you know waiting for him to answer the, the mysteries of painting you know <laughs> and uh, just saying that out loud just sounds so silly at this point but uh, I'm sitting there and I'm watching him and it's like holy shit this is what I do this is what I, I sit at my table and do this is not any different this isn't you know there's no uh, uh, you know crazy voodoo going on here or anything like that it's just he's painting you know and it was and same with Jordy. I sat and watched Jordy for, for quite a while too, you know, and uh, just kind of absorbed the way that they were doing things. And, and it was just really a, it was just really a cool experience. I'm just going to leave it at that. It was just really one of those experiences in my life that was very surreal and very, uh, very much what, uh, what I'd been, I'd been looking for in some ways. So. If you guys ever get that chance to go to Lock and Load and, and meet those guys and, and, and watch and hang out with them for a bit, uh, jump on it, take it, because it's, uh, it's a really cool experience. I'm just coming back in here real quick with uh, the highlight color that I used, uh, just with the edge of my brush and just picking up some of these folds. just to make that uh, highlight color just pop just a little bit more. You know, uh, to the guy earlier that said, uh, you know, I don't, uh, that I, you know, I said you shouldn't paint over airbrushed surfaces unless they've dried for 24 hours. Um, I'm kind of chuckling at, at what you said because um, I've also said that Vallejo paints don't two brush blend very well and that's all I've been do uh, doing with this Vallejo paint so far is two brush blending with it so shit what do I know right? <laughs> uh, but I will say though there are some Vallejo colors that I will not two brush blend with just kind of started doing it with this purple and I guess it's uh, one of those ones that, that does okay. Maybe it's the game color versus the model color because I do notice that the game color does have a little bit more, I don't know, it just seems a little bit more user friendly with some of these techniques that, uh, that we use so much in miniature painting so maybe that's what it is. Alright, so um, what we're going to do now, and what I'm going to focus on now, is um, kind of this this armor piece here, um, or, or his his armor rather. Um, I want to work some browns into here. Okay, um, I think the pauldrons on his shoulders and any other armor plates that I come across, I'm probably going to do silver, um, and then wash them in like a, a, a purple glaze, just to give it that that little bit of a hint of purple, but not, not something that's uh, overly strong, just a, just a thin, one or two thin glazes I think is all, all it's going to need. Looks like there's a few more questions in chat, let me just set this guy down here and look at those real fast. Yeah. Yeah, the iris tutorial, one of the very first ones I did, uh, is a great primer for beginning to brush blending. I agree. Also, check out the one on the Signar Charger. That one is also pretty good on two brush blending. Um, any thoughts on a good starter airbrush that won't uh, that won't break me? Um, 
Well, you know, um, gosh, I don't know. It all, all depends on, on your budget. The very first airbrush I got, I bought a airbrush compressor from a website called Airbrush City. And it was kind of their, I don't know, they, 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 they sell them in kits. And uh, it was kind of a uh, beginner kit, I think is what they called them. And it was uh, quote unquote made for nail brush uh, or uh, uh, fingernail uh, airbrushing, I guess. And I think at the time I spent like 80 bucks on all three things. And that airbrush lasted me all of about a month, to be honest, because I was really trying hard to figure out how to airbrush at first. And so I was using the thing like every day. And so the air compressor gave out on me pretty quick. But also my skill level, um, you know, spiked really fast. You know, the, the learning curve is pretty steep with airbrushing. And, um, you know, you're, once you get past, or once you get those first few um, basic techniques down, um, you're going to want a, a higher quality brush so that you can um, you can do higher quality things, you know. And uh, uh, so you know, I'm I, I'm kind of on the fence. I, I definitely respect the guys that are like, hey, I'm on a budget, you know. But at the same time, you know, especially with the way people are right now with airbrushing, everybody wants to get in it. If if you were to buy an airbrush buy into airbrushing and it didn't work out and you decided you wanted to sell it, you could pretty easily, I would think, pawn off your used airbrush equipment um, and, and still recoup. Maybe not all of your costs, but I would say a significant amount of it. So, you know, don't be afraid to, I guess what I'm saying is don't be afraid to, uh, to spend to spend a little money on it, you know. Um, I my first quote unquote nice airbrush was an Awada Eclipse. And I still use it to this day. In fact it's the airbrush I used uh, to uh, to paint this guy here. And um, it's a fantastic brush and it's done fantastic things for me. And I love it. And I think it was a hundred and retailed for hundred and twenty nine dollars at the time. And uh, I've replaced the needle once, and I haven't really replaced any other parts on it since I've owned it. And I've owned it now for, it's got to be close to nine years, maybe eight years. Um, I am going to, this little cloak piece right here, I'm actually going to paint this brown. Because I want to break up the purple a little bit on the back here. So we're going to use, uh, paint this a, a nice leather color. In fact, uh, Becky, getting back to to you for a moment. This is a Vallejo model color, uh, leather brown. And it's a great, great base uh, for for leather. Yeah. And see that'll break that, that cloak, the color on that cloak up nicely so it's not all uh, just you know, a, a, a sea of purple there, you know. Uh, and then also uh, the secondary cloak behind him here. Um, also going to do that in the brown too.
And you know, Becky, I'm kind of excited that I'm, I, I got to paint this uh, this mini for you. Um, I was uh, thinking about playing circle for a while, and actually, you know, uh, painted up uh, quite a bit of a uh, of circle. Um, the uh, I've got a nice uh, 50 point chromac list that I've painted up, and it's got a great uh, Getterix conversion in it, painted by uh, or uh, modeled by Eric uh, Eric from Gold Drake uh, Studios. Did a fantastic job on it, but uh, you know I don't know if Circle is uh, doing it for me to be honest. And uh, so I've got a whole stack of uh, cir un unpainted Circle models that I'm going to be uh, offloading here pretty soon, and uh, um, not sure what I'm going to replace them with at this point. But you know I'm pretty busy with uh, doing these paint casts. Pretty busy with uh, doing some commission work for Trevor and getting caught up on a few other projects that I've uh, had sitting for too long, and so um, so I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be going on to anything for else for a while. Just sticking with my men off and working on working on that. Um, and so uh, I guess what I'm saying is, is uh, you know, this is a model that I probably wouldn't have um, uh, gotten to paint otherwise. So uh, so it's kind of cool cool opportunity here. And you know, I think I'm going to keep the Chromac list that I painted just because it's it's painted so well and, and, and I actually was having fun with that list. It was branching out into some of the other casters that I, I felt like I was getting a little, I don't know, disinterested in. And so, um, you know, it's nice to, nice to, uh, I don't know, it's nice to enjoy the caster you're playing. I wasn't really enjoying the others, and I wasn't really enjoying the faction as a whole. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to keep the Chromac list, and then probably get rid of everything else. So, um, so yeah. Uh, no, I haven't tried Pash uh, airbrushes. Um, I had one of their air compressors for a while, lasted me about two years before I bought the, air the current air compressor that I have. Um, so, but yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with that particular brand. Sorry. So I'm going to um, now put a brown wash on all of these brown areas that I just painted. This is an Army Painter strong tone and um, we're just going to let that apply this and then let that dry and um, I will uh, probably call it quits on this guy for the night at that point because it's got to dry anyway and then next time I've got, I'm on with you back Becky we'll um, We'll add, uh, we'll do the, uh, the stones. Uh, I've got some cool ideas in mind for that. So I think that'll look pretty cool. It's probably going to be a little bit of a deviation from the rest of your army, but um, after talking with you, um, I think I'm okay with that. So, um, but if you want me to run them by you before I do them, I'm happy to do that. And then once I set this guy aside to dry, I think I'm going to spend a few minutes um, working on something for myself tonight. So, haven't really done that yet much on these paint casts. So, I uh, just spend a, you know, spend about 10, 15 minutes uh, showing you guys some of my personal stuff that I'm working on, and uh, uh, kind of painting and hanging out with you guys for a few minutes with that. So. about as far and then the other thing I guess I want to do too which will give me this break will give me a chance to do that is um, before or before I start finishing painting him I believe I don't think he's actually wearing like metal plated armor I believe all this is um, uh, stone so I want to verify that on the artwork and, um, and then maybe come back to it so anyway so I'm gonna set that guy aside and